So um, what I do are, are is ethnographic methods, which basically means I'm one of the players. So it's a participant observation activity. And I'm following these players around for uh, 10 months. Um, there's a pool of about, about, about 60, actually N is 59, but, um, uh, players. But on any given session, there's only 40 of us. So there's you know, this larger pool of players out there, but um, in any given night, there's 40 of us online. Um, we met two or three times a week. Each time was about four or five hours long. So that's, you know, averaged out about 12.5 hours over 10 months, right? Per week over 10 months, um, which turns out to be about 500 hours of, of uh, chat data that I was collecting. Um, but while I'm doing that, I'm also sort of engaged in this larger ethnography. But the dissertation isn't about the larger one, um, where I'm where I'm also documenting just my other play stuff that's happening that isn't involved with this raid group that I was with, and actually that's oh, easily over a thousand hours of, of uh, stuff that I have in there because I played probably forty hours a week or something like that. Um, so uh, um, in certain fights, like the fights with Ragnaros, I also video recorded. Um, the fights, uh, which also meant I, I captured the audio. Um, you know, you could hear the people talking, um, and so I, had to do, I could do some interaction analysis uh, about what was happening in the video. Um, and I bring to it a discipline perception um, that uh, um, Reed and um, Rogers wrote about, and uh, um, which basically means that uh, because I'm a player, I understand. Um, the things that are happening, the discourse that's happening in the game. Um, and as an example, remember SS target will change at Domo, but until then your reserves be SS at all times is completely meaningful to me, but I don't expect anyone else in this room to know what it means. Um, in English though, remember who you give soul stones to will change when we encounter major Domo executives, but until then the priest or shaman who you've been assigned to should have your soul stone at all times. And I still don't expect you to understand what that means. Um, so. To break that down, um, a soul stone is this magic item that warlocks, which is one of those character classes that you could choose to play, can create and give to other characters or other players. Um, priests and, and what it does is if you die and you have a soul stone on you, you can um, bring yourself back to life. It's called resing or resurrecting. You can, you can, bring, you can self res. Um, priest and shaman are these uh, healer types of characters that can resurrect other players, but they can't resurrect themselves after they die. So warlocks have to give the soul stones to these priests and shamans so that if everyone in the group dies, the priests and shamans can then bring themselves back to life and then bring everyone else in the group back to life. That's what that means. Um, and there's sort of a limited resource to soul stones, and so you have to like coordinate when to give it to who and things like that. Um, the rating practice uh, that I look at, uh, the, the sort of theory lens that I, that I bring to it is um, mostly what's called, uh, um, what Ian Bogus calls object-oriented ontology, um, which includes after network theory, distributed cognition, the mangle of practice, the assemblage that um, Deleuze and Guattari wrote about, and uh, arrangements that um, um, uh, Reed Stevens and, and crew write about. Um, basically, it's treating um, people and all their sort of material resources um, as this distributed network that uh, all works together in a coordinated fashion to, to complete some sort of task. Um, you know, roles and responsibilities are constantly renegotiated and redistributed. Um, so the analyses that I did in my dissertation, actually there's four main chapters. I'm only going to cover three of them today. Um, the first is just uh, an exploration of how the um, how playing the game and developing expertise in it was um, not this sort of mentalist knowledge skills type of thing, but more this how how successful you are at distributing your resources, um, social material practice. And um, uh, next, I'll cover just sort of how we communicate with each other, uh, and, which was really important in terms of how how we stay coordinated. And then uh, lastly, I'll, I'll cover. Um, a new uh, modification to the game that someone had created about four months into our raiding life and how that uh, affected our um, raid. So first off, um, in, in terms of expertise, you know, the sort of common, I think, conception of expertise is that um, it's knowing uh, everything there is to know about a particular domain, right? Or being able to um, have skills in that particular domain. but. Um, it, it, so, like for example, in World of Warcraft, there's all these numbers behind everything. 
Um, so your character has these attributes called, or these things called attributes like agility, strength, and stuff like that, and each, each thing has a number attached to it. You also have these abilities that you can activate. So like Sinister Strike, for example, is an ability, and it has numbers attached to it, you know, how much damage it does, things like that, how many, time, how many times a minute or whatever you can activate it, and things like that. Um, and so one way of thinking about expertise is, you know, I learned what all these numbers mean, right? Um, but in actuality, uh, I'm not remembering the stuff at all, you know? I have these other things there that remembers it for me, uh, much like uh, Hutchins's um, uh, cockpit, right, Air, airplane cockpit. Um, and so I have these uh, modifications to the game that I've installed that basically decode everything for me and keep track of all that stuff for me. And so I think um, expertise in the game really isn't about, like, knowing like this stuff, but it's more like knowing how to configure your play space in such a way so that you can be successful. And does it include the ability to learn more effectively as an expert? I think so. I mean, so you could think about it this in sort of a cognitive load theory type of way too, right? So like by offloading all this stuff to something else, yeah. I can spend more of my um, cog cognition on like learning how to be efficient in the game. Oh. Um, so here's an example of all these different add-ons and everything that I'm using. Uh, this is a fight in the game. There's you know the stuff that's happening in the 3D space, and then there's all these sort of um, what's called unit frames or uh, charts and panels and things like that. Um, and very similar to that, you know, line of chat. I don't expect any of you really to know what the hell is going on, right? Um, and even with labels. Uh, um, you know, everything has a purpose, and I'm paying attention to almost all of it uh, when I'm playing the game. The jumble in the middle is the actual end game fight. Um, but I'm actually paying attention to, uh, to all this other is, stuff is too. Is it all labeled for you when you're playing or not labeled? No, it's not like that, it's like that. Wow. Um, but, but I um, configured this myself, so I know what each thing is doing because I'm positioning it in a certain way and I've, I've identified um, what I need help in, and so I go and look for that add-on to then install into the game. Um, and so, in a fight, sometimes the three D space isn't is completely abstract, and so um, it's interesting to think that like I'm not even really paying attention to what's happening in the game, right? I'm only paying attention to all these sort of heads-up display things that are on my on my screen overlaid on top of the game. The sort of, um, if you take film um, studies type uh, literature, it's the non-diegetic stuff that I'm paying attention to rather than the diegetic stuff that's happening in, in the frame. Um, and those material resources extend out. It's not just in the game. Um, and this is clearly uh, shown by, um, you know, Reed, Tom, and Lori uh, in their chapter on um, uh, how video gaming is, is uh, sort of situated in the game, but also in the room around them and, and in the world around them. And so this is a web guide that we were using, a strategy guide for how to kill the big, big fiery dude. Um, and it's 14 pages long, and somebody wrote it, and we used it. And um, you know, it's an example of all the sort of web resources that are out there. The World Warcraft wiki is the second biggest in the world. Um, there's, you can see down there, there's 80, over 81,000 articles. There's more stuff written about World Warcraft now than there, than there is about like most countries. Um. <laughs> well, it's the same thing, isn't it? Right, yeah. <laughs> so all that is to say that, that um, being successful in the game, being an expert in the game, is, is being able to configure your play space uh, successfully and draw on these sort of social material resources around you. Um, so when you join this larger group, though, then um, you actually have, uh, you have to reconfigure yourself. It isn't just you and your space anymore. It's now you plus 39 other players in all their spaces. And then each of you is going to take a specialized role, which means some of the add-ons that you installed are no longer even relevant. You have to rely on others and things like that. Um, and then there are some shared add-ons that you can. Um, but anyways. Um, how we did that coordination and, and, and um, communicate with each other efficiently. Uh, in this screen, uh, the, you can see on the bottom left is my chat window, right? Um, the chat window. And uh, 
another thing to know is that when you um, are playing, you're filtering, you're constantly filtering. Um, so I am paying attention to most everything, but there are certain things I'm paying way more attention to than other things. Um, and one way of dividing or filtering up the sort of communication that's happening, we were using a bunch of different chat channels. And so I played a rogue, and um, there's all these uh, different chat channels. There's the Say, which is uh, when, when you type in the Say channel, it's just broadcast to players who are sort of near you in the physical space. There's Whisper, so you can talk directly to uh, individual players um, privately. Uh, there's the Party Talk, which anyone who's in this sort of group, the subgroup of the raid that you're in, you can talk to them, but they don't even have to be near you. They could be wherever. Um, and then there's the raid channel, which covers everyone in the group that you're with. Um, and so, uh, you know, players selectively choose which channel to use to, to communicate. And then there's these um, specialized channels that are created by uh, players to, um, you know, as a custom channel that they can then use to further divide um, basically their attention and, and, and um, uh, what kind of communication they, they need to, to convey to each other. So, for example, um, I was a rogue, so I was in the Mad Rogues channel. So I'm not actually paying attention to these other channels, the talk that's going on in the other channels. Um, so if you're in raid mode, does, does the person you're going after get to hear that, or is that, do they cap out of The person that... So you're, you're trying to raid a monster. Mm -hmm. So you can, everybody that's in the raid can hear. Can the monster hear it too? The monster, well, the monster is just computer controlled. It isn't, a, it isn't a, the player. Um, the computer isn't aware of the chat that you're typing okay. in. So it doesn't react to what you're saying to each other. Uh, although that would be kind of cool. Um, um, so uh, this is just uh, an example of some um, of the transcript that I was working with and, and notes that I was taking uh, to decode it for myself. Um, what, what, the thing that I find most interesting about the chat is uh, in you could almost use it as um, uh, a way to judge performance of the, of the raid group. In terms of the nature of the chat, if, it, if we were being jovial with each other, if we were making jokes, having, um, you know, being sort of lighthearted with each other, uh, showing mm -hmm. camaraderie, um, then I think that was an indicator pretty much that we, we were trusting each other in terms of the roles and everything that we, that we had to uh, fulfill. And uh, we, we had good performing nights, as in we, you know, uh, worked efficiently and everything. And then in um, this, in particular, one night in uh, early April 2006, um, we had this really poor performing night where we were dying on easy monsters who, who we had had become routine before. Um, and if you look at the chat on that night, um, there are certain parts where, like there's this one section where we're, no one's even talking for eight minutes, which is like, eight minutes, what's going on? Um, and, uh, and the type of chat that was happening, people were bickering with each other and, and not showing evidence that they weren't trusting each other in terms of where they, wish, where they were supposed to be positioned and things like that, and, and they weren't playing their roles right. Um, when that happens, uh, uh, it's called, it's, uh, in the gamer speak, it's called a meltdown, um, when people bicker enough that the, great, the, the raid or the group sort of disbands. Um, we had a temporary meltdown that night, uh, which the next day um, had to be repaired. Um, so this is just an example from our web forums, a uh, uh, post that someone wrote to try to realign the group um, so that we would be group aligned rather than all these different people um, not aligned together. So I love our raid. I know we are going to get burned out at times and frustrated and upset and disagree with one another. It's part of being human. Um, we're like brothers and sisters, really. So it's, it's really trying to frame the group as a family and, and that when you disagree with each other, that's totally to be expected and um, we can push on because we love each other. Do, do I know who said that or is it anonymous? Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I know which raid member said this. Okay. Um, 